The damage that we've done environmentally in the last 150 years is seriously bad. There's been a bit of work done over those years to try and improve the health of the river, but I'm concerned this might be our last best chance to make a difference. This whole area, the Mary River catchment, was affected very badly in the 2022 floods. We had record floods come through. The floods are getting worse. The dry times are getting worse. That could potentially be a huge threat to some of our species. If you have a look at the damage that we've created, ring bark the trees, clear the scrub, grow grass for the cattle. Oh, what about the protection of the waterways? What about the erosion that's going to push into the rivers? This is the importance of science and being educated to this, really, just making people aware of the importance. Species like the Australian lungfish, that's been described as a living fossil. It's unchanged from the fossil record more than 150 million years ago. So this is a, a part of our heritage of Australia. Following on from the floods of 21-22, the Australian Government and the Queensland Government put together a package of disaster recovery funding for which BMRG applied. Our primary focus as BMRG is to invest with intent in this catchment. We really want to value and measure our natural assets. We've been lucky enough to tackle one of the big questions that we've been asking for 20 years, and that question is, where are our threatened species and where aren't they? Our purpose was to go out and do a broad-scale catchment assessment of the threatened species post-flooding. And with that information, we'll be able to sort of guide investment on how we can build resilience in areas where there may be less than we were expecting. The key is being informed so we don't waste valuable resources, spending that, that limited amount of money and, and effort in the best places to give the best possible benefit. And that's why this data that we've been collecting in the last year or so really underpins that more effective decision making. We've sampled 60 odd sites in a matter of sort of eight weeks. It's been really intensive field sampling. We've had traditional sampling methods like electrofishing and fike netting. And now we've paired that up with some new methods like environmental DNA. The target species that we're looking for at the moment are our key threatened species in this area, which are the Mary River cod, the Australian lungfish, and we've got two endangered turtles, the white-throated snapping turtle and the Mary River turtle. We often talk about people operating in silos. It's good to break those silos down and really work together as a consortium towards a common goal. And that's exactly what we've managed to do with this project. The laughs that you had around the fire or, um, you know, that moment of joy when you catch a, a rare and threatened species that not many people get to see in their lifetimes. They're the moments that make a difference. And once you share a moment like that with someone, you don't forget about it. This whole process actually started with BMRG engaging with all of those TA groups 200 years ago. People were taken out of the country, so it's about it's about bringing people back. So that, that's a part of the the bigger plan. It's about working together and building that partnership in the near future for our upcoming generation as well. Build the relationships in a healthy way, so they're confident in who they're approaching and knowing that those people are there for them. It's collective information that makes. You know, good medicine for the country. I used to question if, if, if we've lost stuff, and now I say nothing's lost, you know, that, that knowledge isn't lost, it's, it's asleep and dormant laying out there. It's so important, and getting our young ones back out on country and reconnecting with country, reconnecting with culture, engaging with places like BMRG, and so it's good that you can show that scientific side to back up the knowledge that we've we've had. We need to go back to the grassroots with our young people, teaching them their culture on country. The only way to do that is to be on ground and get them in a position where they're always in country, learning from the best teacher, which is the ground beneath us. Learn about the country and how to look after the country and how we can break that barrier. Build the relationships in a healthy way and knowing that those people are there to support them, to put them in a position where they can care for country. We're not going to be here forever and if we don't pass on the information and 
they're going to miss the opportunities. And you don't want to be 10 years down the track and them having the same conversations that we've had to have. We need to use the old science and use the new science, combine the two into one science and make something positive happen quickly. Science, threatened species, restoration of habitats is not something that's been traditionally well funded. It's our job to make sure that uh, that funding is directed towards meaningful uh, environmental restoration. The key to the environmental accounting framework is having that standardisation of methods that we measure across landscapes and species and projects that enables us to compare apples with apples. If we can bring our various expertise to the table, bring our resources, we can do a much better job than if we were working individually. So that's been the real the spirit of the collaboration. It's not too late to turn it around and there's really fantastic processes in place. We owe it to our future generations to do what we can, I think, to recover this catchment and its amazing hotspot of threatened species. It all sort of builds towards our 10-year resilient strategy of, of protecting in the Burnett Mary region, yeah. When you think over the next 10, 20, 50 years, the threats posed by climate change, I think we need to seize the moment now before we lose these species that I think we could all enjoy and care about. We could all just do a little bit like that because this is my little mosaic, but if we could all do that, we end up with a really big, beautiful mosaic. BMRG is unique because our remit is natural resource management. So we can look at agriculture, we can look at ecology, we can look at communication and engagement, all of our habitats. It's all part of our natural resources, so we can look at all that together. The story's not finished yet. This is just the start. Now we've still got plenty of work to do. And it'll take a lot of hands and a lot of people to get the job done here.